Take all the 1980 scripts that are out there, ball them up, put them in a pile, and just <laughs> burn them. Mr. L.A. Ricky Caruth is here. Good to you, man. What's up, Charlotte? You guys have been really quiet today. I want to hear you guys get loud one time. Just let me hear you. How many new agents do we have? Okay, rule number one for new agents. Never raise your hand or admit that you're a new agent. <laughs> Seriously. I want to give you new agents a, a few tips real quick. A new agent, you need to own that you're a new agent, right? Whenever a seller or a buyer asks you if you're a new agent, how many houses you sold, so on and so forth, they don't really care about the answer so much as how you answer it. The confidence. They want somebody confident as their agent. So I don't care what your handicap is. If you think you're too old, too young, you're, you're, you're not tech savvy, you're scared of the phone, whatever your handicap is, I promise you there's an angle, there's an opportunity right there somewhere for you. Okay, and I want you guys to start finding the angles and looking for the opportunities and not the negatives, not what's holding you back, not what you, why you think you won't make it. Let's figure out why we can make it. New agents have a lot of uh, advantages over experienced agents, tons of advantages. Okay, the, the, the biggest one that I see is time. New agents have so much more time to do things that experienced agents do not have time to do. And I think that you guys need to realize this and start utilizing it. Here's an example. When I was newer, I studied the market every day. I studied my MLS for like an hour. I knew every single property, every new listing, every closed sale, pending. I knew how long it was on the market, square foot price. I knew everything, like the back of my hand. After about two or three or four years, that wasn't as a priority as other things, right? I started to lose that, that touch with the market. Now I still keep up with it, but not near what it was from the beginning. And that gave me an edge over experienced agents. I knew more about the market, right? And when there's always new market information coming out every single day, if you, if you take advantage of the fact that it's brand new, brand new listing, brand new pending, brand new closed sale, and you take that information to the public first before anyone else, you now become known as an expert over all the other agents because you knew something about the market that no one, nobody else knew. So this is just one example out of many examples of why whatever you think is your handicap is not your handicap. There's actually opportunities within. Um, who here is, is following me on YouTube or listening to my podcast? I'm Ricky Carruth. I'm a 17-year real estate agent. Um, this year, I'm actually having the best year in real estate that I've ever had. And I've had some really good years. I've been a three-time number one REMAX agent in the state of Alabama three-time Diamond Award winner, which is a million dollars in personal income through Remax. Okay, I wrote two books a couple years ago. I've been selling 100 properties a year for the last five years straight, just me and an assistant. Okay, and a couple years ago, I started Zero to Diamond. I'm the only coach at Zero to Diamond. It's the very first completely free real estate coaching program. It's not a get in there and we're gonna, it's free up front, we're gonna upcharge you kind of program. It's free forever. Take the information and go succeed program. Okay. The reason I love that it's free and I did start out charging, but I, I I'm good at adapting just like I'm a real estate business and I'll explain a lot of stuff to you. I'm really good at figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And the free really came natural to me because when I came to do speeches, I was having to hold back information that other people were paying for, hoping the people listening would, would want to pay for that information as well. But now I can tell you everything right here. And, and I don't have to hold back anything hoping that you pay me later. Okay, that's the philosophy behind the free coaching and why I love it. Because I can tell you anything that you want to know and not care or expect anything back. 
except for you to go succeed. So um, I've been doing that for about two years. I've still continued building my real estate business. Um, like I said, this year is the best year I've had so far. Um, my mission is to reduce the failure rate. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm here. I flew here today. I'm going to get on a plane and fly back to Orange Beach, Alabama. Right when I get through with this, I'm, I'm traveling around the world, spreading the messages that I'm fixing to share with you. I'm going to Brazil at the end of the month. I've been to like 10 places so far this year, and I'm just going to keep pushing and trying to help people. I am reducing the failure rate. Agents are reaching out to me every week saying that they were about to quit. If you follow me on Instagram and watch my stories, I post those messages, some of them, where people are telling me I was about to quit seven months ago and I found you somewhere. So that's what keeps me going is you guys reaching out to me telling me how much it's helping. Okay, and I feel like I have a very unique way that I built my business and that's why I wanted to start sharing it. Because not a lot of people are, are coaching or teaching agents what I'm teaching you. Okay, so I want to cover a couple of philosophies. Okay, three main philosophies of my program. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. The first philosophy is business is unlimited for every agent. Think about it for just a second. Business is unlimited for every single agent. There's an unlimited amount. And, and guys, when I'm saying all this, I want you to know that this is my life. This is, this is real. This is what I've been through and the struggles that I had to go through to learn this stuff. This is not smoke and mirrors. This is real facts. There's an unlimited amount of loyal clients for each and every agent out there. The problem is you haven't put the work in to find those loyal clients. And that's, that's the disconnect. That's the problem. Okay? True or false, you can't call every single person in Charlotte in your life. You'll never talk to every single person. Okay? Therefore, that is an unlimited amount of people that you have to, to talk to about buying and selling properties. It's unlimited. You can't do it all. Unlimitedness means more than you can handle. The fact that it's such a process to do a deal, you got to talk to them, create the relationship, show them property, you know, nurture the relationship, get the deal, get the listing, show the property. It takes months and months and months and years sometimes decades to do a deal. Because of the process, you can't just do 100 deals right now today and get paid for all of them. Never. Because of the process, it makes it to where we can only handle so much. And if you, if you will just please understand that business is unlimited, you, your mind starts to open up to the fact that, wait a minute, it's unlimited and it's predicated on how much I can handle personally. How, your success is predicated on two things, how quickly you're going to adapt and realize what I'm telling you, and then how hard you're going to work and how much you can handle. Are you going to put the work in to talk to enough people? And then how much can you handle? I can handle about 20 to 25 under contract, you know, pending deals. That's what I have all the time. 20 to 25 pending deals. Um, I'll keep about 50 listings and I'm always, where's my next one? I'm really good at letting the process take care of itself and not worrying about all the little things in the deal that most people worry about and that allows me to handle more. So what I'm saying is, is it's all predicated on how much you can handle. Some people get two or three or four properties under contract and that's it, they're done. They are tied up for weeks and I don't know what they do for eight hours a day with four or five pending deals and six listings. That's literally five minutes a week for me to look at it and say, okay, all that stuff's good. Now where's my next deal coming from? Okay, so I'm just sharing guys' thoughts just out of my head randomly right now because I feel like you guys need it. Next key philosophy that, that we really push is that it's okay if the market crashes. This is a big one because Everybody's scared about the market crashing. We had such a huge crash in 2008. 
And it's went up for so long since then, everybody's worried, we've got to be at the top. It's got to crash at some point. It's going to go down at some point. And I'm here to tell you that I got in the business when I was 20 years old. It was 2002. The market exploded and I became a millionaire by 23. By the time I'm 25, the market crashed. I lost everything. I was bankrupt, sleeping on friends' couches, slept in my car. I went back to roofing houses and worked on an oil rig for a year. Okay? I went through that. And what happened was remarkable. I was just as happy then as I am now and as I was before all that happened because to me, my life is wake up and grind. I just love the process. I could retire right now. I'm flying here for free to speak to you guys to try to help you because I love the process. So during that time when the market crashed, I read 100 books and studied the market and I wanted to know why I lost everything. And I realized the big aha moment for me about how to handle a market crash and the fact that we don't have to worry about market crashes ever is when I was studying the market on MLS, tax records, and I noticed that clients that I had before the market crashed were still buying. I was on an oil rig working and they were still buying and selling stuff at the bottom. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, man, wait a minute. Number one, the, the biggest thing I realized was that closings happen every day. They never stop. The, 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 the climate of the market changes and you have to change up your game plan. Not necessarily your game plan, you do the same things. You call people and ask them what you can do to help them. You just continue on that path. But, but you change, the market is changing so you're, you're changing with it. But the name of the game is contacting people. Whoever talks to the most people is gonna win. So I realized that closings happen every day, but I also realized that how to, how to make it through is when, when the market comes down, property owners are gonna do one of three things. I want you to take this with you. They either buy, because it's so cheap, and they wanna buy right now before it goes up, or they sell because they're in trouble, the market crashed on them, or they hold, they're gonna ride it out. And I want to contact as many property owners as I can during that time and ask them which are the three options that they're going to go forward with at this time. And out of the three that they're going to, whichever one they're choosing, is there an agent they're going to work with on that? And if not, I would love to be your agent. I would love to stay in touch with you. And I want to start building those relationships. Market share is not how many closings, listings, transactions that you have. It's how many real lifelong relationships you have with property owners in the area. Whatever agent has the biggest percentage of relationships with property owners in the area wins. You won. If a really big time agent sells 500 properties over here, but doesn't care about people, and Ricky's over here and he built a thousand real relationships during that same year, but only closed 20 deals. I'm going, I'm putting my money on Ricky for the future. We trade stocks on future earnings of companies and I trade market share on future earnings of real estate agents. And whoever has, the, has those, those owners in their pocket, because the owners are the highest quality prospects, period. They buy and sell, they own the property that you want to sell. Okay, what we do, what I teach, and the way that I've developed my business is this. I show you how to create your own unlimited amount of the highest quality prospects for the cheapest price possible. I've cracked the code, I've figured it out, and now I'm sharing it with everybody for nothing. My third mindset I wanna share with you today, and this is a big one, relationships over transactions. This was the one when I realized my clients were still buying at the bottom. That's when it hit me that I was more concerned with the deals up to that point. I didn't think anything about the people. And when, when I saw that, I thought, man, if I would have stayed like buddies, if, they, if I would have continued those relationships and stayed in touch and saw what I could do to help those people, I would have been, been closing those deals. 
And so I just took all this information, all the books I read and everything that happened, and I put it all together. 2000, 2007, I got laid off from the oil rig. I was already dabbling in real estate and boom, I had, it was like the perfect storm. I realized all this stuff. I got laid off. I had no choice. I had to do something. And I just started crushing it. 2008, I had a really good year. 2009, 2010 was a BP oil spill. Mini recession for my area. Hit us really hard. Everybody was scared to death. Sellers were dumping. Agents were leaving the area. I made more money. I made 50% more money. I went from 100,000 in 2009 to 150 in 2010. Um, just going through adopting this I, I was so excited because i was like i can test out my new theories on this little mini recession and see if what i'm what i figured out really works and it worked so i just continued on continued on continued on by 2014 so 2008 i realized everything it took me six more years of implementing 15 hours a day to get to 100 deals a year it doesn't happen overnight. It took me eight years making it, losing it, learning it. Another six years implementing to get where I really wanted to be was 100 deals a year. That's what I really wanted. What I really wanted was a million dollars a year. And I finally hit that. So the relationships over transactions. Let me dive into that really briefly. What the mainstream training out there says, call sellers. Ask them if they want to sell. See if they consider moving. If not, who do they know? Anybody heard that before? Okay, those scripts are designed to figure out what the client can do for you. Think about it. You're asking them if they would please, Mr. Seller. You don't know me, but will you please sell something so I can make a commission? I don't know you. This is the first time we're talking, but please do a deal with me so I can make money. Right? Please do something for me. And what I'm saying is throw that away. Take all the 1980 scripts that are out there, ball them up, put them in a pile, and just <laughs> burn them. And adopt my script, which is, hey, Mr. Johnson, hey, this is Ricky Carruth at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing? Good, I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Look, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but a house around the corner just sold. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I can do for you. I want to know what I can do for the client, not what the client can do for me. Now I got a real relationship happening here. I got a real, I have some, some, some real substance to, what I'm, to what's going on. I'm not asking him for anything. I'm, I'm certainly not asking, you know, he doesn't know me, but will you divulge all your future financial biggest plans to me? And if not, tell me all your friends and family's names and numbers. Right? It's horrible. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm spreading realness into an industry that's full of so much smoke. And I'm going to reduce the failure rate. So I want to give you guys a bonus, a bonus mindset real quick. Ricky's Law 5. You're going to like this. Losing deals is, is inevitable. You're going to lose a deal. Sellers are going to not choose you to list. Um, you know, buyers are going to write a contract and get cold feet. All kinds of things are going to happen that are out of your control. You can't control it. So why should you worry about something that you can't control? That's what I said earlier about when I have so many deals, I don't worry about them because I'm letting them, I'm out of control of it. If a fire pops up, sure, I'll put it out. I'll handle it when the time comes. I'm not going to sit around worrying about it. I'm going to sit around thinking about who else can I help because if I sit around trying to fix every little problem before it comes up and I'm trying to worry about every little thing, I'm doing a disservice to my future clients that need me. I'm taking that time away from future clients that need me and I'm putting it right here where it doesn't need to be at all because those deals are done. That buyer wants to buy, that seller wants to sell, that deal is closed. Right? So what I want you to do when you, when you lose a deal, because what happens when we lose a deal? We sulk about it. We're upset. Why'd it happen? I had the money. I was already had it spent. <laughs> but the thing is, is it wasn't your money. It wasn't, it's not, that, that was never your money. It was never your property. It's the property owners. That's their choice of what they want to do with that property, not yours. 
You have no control over this stuff. You do the best you can do to connect. Okay? We want to connect first, then convert. Remember that. Connect first, then convert. But the law of five, every time you lose a deal, I want you to set a stopper, stop uh, watch on your, on your phone. I want you to put five minutes in. I want, I want you to hit go. I want you to give yourself five minutes to sulk and think about what all, let it all replay in your head. When that five minutes is over, you're done thinking about it. Forget about it forever and take the future time you just got back that, that you don't have to do that deal anymore and go get five more deals. You can literally get five more deals with the time that you don't have to spend showing, listing, all the different intricate details of that deal. Think about it when you're thinking of when that five minutes. I want you to think about the future time. Think about all the stuff you would have had to do if you did that deal and all the time that would have taken, the hours. And I want you to take five minutes to think about it and sulk about it. And then when it's over, forget about it and go get five more deals. This is how you multiply your business. This is real stuff. So I got to go. I don't have much time here. Question. If you guys had your choice, just hypothetically here, if you had your choice between a coach who either never sold real estate or doesn't sell any more, or this coach over here who sells 100 properties a year for the last five years straight, still going, still going harder than he ever went as a single agent and will teach you everything that he knows for nothing. Which one are you gonna choose? You. Okay. <laughs> Here's my coaching program. First, completely free real estate coaching program. You can start a free account at zero to diamond.com. You can also text list to last, which is the name of my second book, to 22828. 90 day action plan. I, I created all this. No, I don't have help with this. This is me. When you see typos in there, it's because it's me and I'm not perfect, <laughs> but it's real. And you're going to succeed. 90 day action plan, online course, live training twice a month, my scripts full access to me. I answer every single Instagram message. I spend hours every day on Instagram answering everybody's specific messages and problems. Why? Because I actually care about your well-being. I want to see the industry go in such a positive direction that you wouldn't believe that the way that I think and the way the where I see it going, this is the wave of the future. Asking people is there anything in the world I can do for you. I'll leave you with this. Real estate we're not in the real estate business. We're in the people business. And if you'll quit chasing deals, people are going to find you. I love you guys. Thank you so much.